Hi, Amy. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you, sir? Very good, very good. good. So, are you able to go through some trigonometry equations and identities? Yep. Uh, I'm like halfway through the book and so far there's no issues. So, That's right. yeah. That's right. There's loads of questions. That's why. There are, yes. Yeah. So, actually, today we'll take up trigonometric uh, identities. And then later, right. we'll combine trigonometric identities with trigonometric equations and work out some examples. Okay. So it will be yeah. kind of uh, linking the two things. We'll also prove the trigonometric identities. Okay. So let me share with All you right. the screen. And from there, we'll begin. Okay. So this is a familiar screen for you, correct? Trigonometric identities. Yes. Yeah. So I've summarized all the trigonometric identities which we will need for GCSC uh, level A, which you are doing at present, part one. Later, we'll combine it with the compound angle formulas and make another list. So this is one half of your trigonometric identities, okay? So we'll talk about the quotient identity, Pythagorean theorem identity. We could rearrange these identities and use them to prove trigonometric identities and also solve equations. So um, you can have a copy of this list and then uh, we'll work on how do we actually prove these identities, very simple methods I'm going to adopt and then quickly move on to a few examples, okay? <laughs> Today, we are going to solve these six questions. These are based on trigonometric identities. Six questions will give you six different concepts. That's the whole idea of selecting these six questions. Once you have solved these six questions, then we'll look into advanced level questions where we have questions like shown here, these five. I'll show you, you know, if you go through this question, we have one minus cos theta over sine theta minus sine theta over one plus cos theta equals to tan two theta, right? There are two numbers in this, right? And we need to solve mm -hmm. this over then a given domain. Now, in such questions, what you need to do is you have to simplify the left term and then you will get something, a number most probably. And then solve the equation tan two theta equals to that number and get your answer. So that is the kind of strategy. For example, in question number four, I've written here, hint is to prove that the left side is two secant theta. Using your trigonometric identities, you have to show that this left side is basically equal to two secant theta. And then you get an equation, which is two secant theta equals to four. And you need to solve this equation within the given domain from zero to 360 degrees. So that is uh, the mm -hmm. additional, you know, another level of solving trigonometric equations, which involve identity. So you should be in a position to do such questions also at the end of the class, okay? So right. we'll begin with very simple concepts. Let me just walk you through what are equations and how the equations are different from identities. So can you please read this part? An equation is a mathematical representation of a statement where two expressions are equal. Correct. So normally in equation, we have an expression on the left side and an expression on the right side with equal to sign in between. So that is an equation. Perfect. So can you read mm -hmm. first from here? So fx equals gx um, is an equation where fx and gx are equal with an independent variable x. Good. So when we if write the equation, this, oh, continue, continue, continue. Yeah. Oh, if the equation is true for every value of the variable or variables for which both expressions are defined, then it is an identity. Otherwise, it is a conditional equation. Got it. It really means that given this kind of an equation. If it is true for all the values of x, the independent variables, then it will be called an identity, correct? Otherwise, it will be treated right. as a conditional equation or in general equation. Okay. So trigono, yeah. I mean, identity is a kind of special. Now, when we say trigonometric identities, in that case, 
the expression will involve a trigonometric expression. That is what makes mm -hmm. it trigonometric identity. To begin with, let's take example number one. And we need to just identify which one of these are equations and which one of these are identities. Well, remember one thing that identities are also equations. Only thing is identities are true for all values. Okay, so can you please read this? Explain why set A of equations are conditional equations and equations of set B are identities. Mm -hmm. So is it just the fact that you said um, with identities, it's true for all values. Got it. So all the ones in set B, if you put any value for X or any value for Y, it will always be true. Perfect. Like, yeah, Perfect. whereas for set A, it can only be one value. So one in this two. case, like 2x minus 1 equals, yeah, 5. It can only be x equals 2. 3. No, 3, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Like, you know, if there's a quadratic equation, you might expect two solutions. If there's a linear equation, you might expect one solution. You may not expect mm -hmm. a solution. You might expect multiple of infinite uh, answers also. For example, if I have an equation x equals to x plus y equals to 0, now, this is interesting. That means that we are writing x is equal to minus y. Now, in this particular case, for any value of y, we have a solution here. Do you see that? Mm. They are related. So, we have infinite solutions. So, let's be clear. But An equation, for example. Yeah, I was just saying, how come it's not an identity? Yeah, I'll, yeah that is a very important question. So basically, mm -hmm. we are writing this as y equals to minus x. That means if you draw a graph, we have a line here, correct? Yeah. Correct? So, so this particular thing is not an identity because for a particular value of x, we have a particular value of y. And it is not that it has some other value also. You, you get my point. For example, mm -hmm. let's compare it with another equation, which is 3p plus 5p equals to 8p. Now, in this case, whatever value of p you put, both sides are equal. Mm -hmm. Now, let's take this e equation, which is in x and y. Whatever value of x and y you put, the equations are satisfied. Right. Yeah. So, for example, here, I could put x as 2 and let's say y as, let's say y as 4. Equation will be satisfied. Mm -hmm. But in this case, if I put x as 2, then y has to be minus 2. You get the idea? A specific value. Only, yeah. only this value will satisfy. But in this case, any value will satisfy. I could put 2, mm -hmm. 4, 2, 5. 2, 0, whatever, the identity will be satisfied with any value of x right. and y. You understand the fine difference between the two? Yeah, that's clear. That is what makes it an identity. So, infinite oh. solutions may not necessarily mean that it is an identity. You get my point? It has mm -hmm. a set of points yeah. which are lying on it, and those set of points are infinite. But if it is an identity, then for this value of x, I could have put any value of y. It will work. Right. That is what the difference is. Now, here is a very important question for you, Amy. Can you uh, read and answer this question? Right. Um, is square root of x squared equals x, is that an identity? Justify your answer or provide a counterexample. Yes. Um, okay. So if if we put five, let's say, yeah. so five squared is 25 and the square root of 25 is plus right. or minus five. So it can't just be X, which was five. So no. there's two solutions. Your is answer wrong? is partly oh. correct. Okay. Your answer is partly correct. Let me just uh, uh, explain it further. I mean, I, I, I'm understanding what you're saying. So if you are putting... See, remember one thing, that square root of anything, square root of A 
it is always greater than or equal to zero. It cannot be negative. You get the idea. Square root is always positive, and the value of a belongs to real numbers. A could be negative. So clearly, square root of a, I mean, is square. Square root of a square will always be greater than or equal to zero. A could be negative. So, for example, let's take this. So, since we are using x square, let x equals to, as you said, five. In that case, five square is indeed equal to five. Yes, but if I take x as equals to minus five, in that case, square root of minus five square will be what? Yes. It will be still five. Hmm. And is five not is not equal to minus, minus five. Uh, Therefore, yeah. this is not an identity. It is not true mm -hmm. for all values. What is an identity here? Well, square root of x square you should know is basically equal to. Let me write big and bold right here in the space. Very important concept, which we are going to use many times. Square root of x square is actually equals to absolute value of x, not just x. So if I put absolute value of x, then this minus five becomes five, and now it is true. Mm -hmm. So that is what it is. Okay. Now let's get back to our trigonometric identities. I'll try to prove the trigonometric identities uh, quickly through a very simple concept. The concept here is that we'll take a point on the coordinate plane. Let the point be A B. When I say that the point is a b, it really means that the x value is a, right, and the y value is b. So I can actually sketch a triangle here, a right angle triangle, for which the angle is theta. The point p, which we are looking is a b. It really means that adjacent side is a, and the opposite side is b. For this right angle triangle, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any point in quadrant one we are talking about. In that case, you see what sine theta is. We know the rule, right? Sine is the ratio of opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite over adjacent. So katua, correct? So you can write sine theta, cosine theta, tan theta, in terms of a and b. Well, hypotenuse is r, where r is equal to square root of a square plus b square. So, ratio of opposite side, which is b over a, is sine theta. A over r is cos theta, and b over a is tan theta. The secondary trigonometric ratios are reciprocal of these primary trigonometric ratios. Cosecant is reciprocal of sine, which is r over b. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine r over a. Cotangent is a over b, reciprocal of tan. Now, to prove this identity, very simple, we can say, well, cosecant is one over sine theta. We need to prove this, right? So, what we can do is we can start with what cosecant theta is. Well, cosecant <laughs> theta is basically ratio of r over b. So, r over b, you could write this as one over b over r, correct? Now, what is b over r? Well, oh, yeah. b over r is sine theta, so it is one over sine theta, and so you have shown the reciprocal identity. Likewise, you could do for secant and cotangent also, as shown here. Correct. Let's move on to the next identity, which is called the quotient identity. The quotient identity is that tan theta is ratio of sine and cosine. Cotangent, which is reciprocal, is the ratio of cos theta and sine theta. Well, we can write what sine theta over cos theta is. Sine theta is b over r, and cos theta is a over r from our triangle, which we just created from the point given in quadrant one, a b. Cancelling r, we do get b over a, and b over a is tan theta, and therefore the ratio sine theta over cos theta is equal to tan theta. <laughs> Similarly, for the ratio cos theta. Over sine theta. Well, that was sine theta over cos theta, which is tan theta. For the ratio cos theta over sine theta, we can write a over r divided by b over r, and we get cotangent theta, proving the second 
quotient identity. Clear? So it is very simple. <laughs> Use a coordinate point and then prove all these. We'll actually prove the Pythagorean trigonometric identities also in the similar fashion. So once again, we are considering our right angle triangle here, right? Whose sides are A and B. Since we have considered the point P, which is A, B, right? And R is the hypotenuse, where R is equals to square root of A square plus B square. Now, using the Pythagorean theorem, we can always write A square plus B square equals to R square, correct? That's a right angle triangle. If I divide yeah. everything by R square, what do I get? I get B over R whole square, A over R whole square, and R square over R square is 1. Now, B over R is sine theta. So we get sine square theta. A mm -hmm. over R is cosine theta. So we get cos square theta. And their sum is 1. That is one of our Pythagorean identity. So simple. To yeah. Now, if I have to prove the second identity, instead of dividing by R square, let us divide B square plus A square equals to R square by A square. If you do that, you get 1 plus tan square theta equals to secant square theta as shown here. Well, you could also divide B square plus A square equals to R square by B square. In that case, you get your third <laughs> Pythagorean identity, which is 1 plus tan square theta equals to cosecant square theta. So it becomes very simple to prove these identities using just a coordinate point. Mm -hmm. and this coordinate point could be anywhere on the plane. And therefore, these identities work for any point on the plane. Now, this is a very good strategy. We could actually use this strategy to solve or prove trigonometric identities. So we'll take up those kinds of questions also later. Uh, let me just touch upon one more identity, which is called complementary angle or co-function identity. It really means mm -hmm. that sine 90 minus theta is cos theta, cos 90 minus theta is sine theta, tan 90 minus theta is cotangent. These are the co-function. When we say co-function, we really mean that in a given triangle, when you're looking from one side, right? So this angle is, for example, theta. The other angle will be what? 90 minus theta, correct? Yes. So when you look from the other side, you get the value of the co-function. That is what it really means. And it makes sense. Mm. Uh, here is a hint for you to solve this. You know, that angle will be 90 minus the angle A, correct? So if I write what sine theta is, or in this case, sine A is, sine A is the ratio of opposite side to hypotenuse, which is CB over AC, correct? And if you look from the angle C point of view, then angle C can be written as cos of 90 minus A, which will be adjacent side over hypotenuse, which is CB over AC. As you can see, CB over AC is what? Sine A. And that shows that cos of 90 minus theta is same as sine theta. Is that clear to you? Just yeah. bring the ratios in the right triangle. So that's another identity which we are going to use. Now, based on this, let's take up a few questions. I think one of the very common questions which you always see in your test paper, especially GCSE test paper, is using counter examples. So with the help of counterexamples, we could prove something or we could disprove something, right? So now yeah. the question here is, can you please read example number one? Um, counterexample. Provide counterexample to show that sine A plus B equals sine A plus sine B is not an identity. Correct. Not an identity if you want to prove, then just take up some example so that both the sides are not equal. And if that is mm. the truth, then it is not an identity. It is simply an equation. So in our case, I'm taking A as 30 degrees and B as 60 degrees. When I substitute 30 and 60 on the left-hand side, I get sine 30 plus 60, which is 90. 30 plus 60 is 90. And we know sine of 90 degrees is 1. So the left-hand yeah. side for the values is 1. On the right-hand side, if I substitute 30 and 60 degrees, I get half plus square root 3 over 2, which is 1 plus square root 3 over 2, it is definitely not equal to 1. Since the two sides are not equal, this equation is not satisfied for the values taken to us. So it acts as a counterexample. 
And so <laughs> this counterexample, we can show that this is an equation, not an identity. Is this concept clear to you? Yeah. Perfect. Now let's move on and take up another question, which actually relates to a very common mistake. So can you please read example number two? Yeah. So steps are shown below to prove that sine theta equals square root of one minus cos square theta is an identity. Find the mistake and provide a counterexample to show that the trigonometric equation is not an identity. Correct. Okay. We know that sine square theta plus cos square theta equals to one is a Pythagorean identity. We just proved it, correct? Yeah. Now let's try to simplify this equation. Taking cos square theta to the right hand side, I get sine square theta equals to one minus cos square theta. Now I am doing square root on both the sides. And I'm mm -hmm. writing this as sine theta equals to square root of one minus cos square theta, which is the given equation to us, right? Is this statement correct? No, because when we square root things, like even when we did the quadratic formula, you do plus or minus. Perfect. Square root, I think. Oh. It is not correct. It has to be plus and minus square root. And that is why this is an equation, not an identity. You get the idea, right? Mm. So that yeah. is how we are going to show it. And now we need to provide a counterexample. As you know, that for sine, cosine, and tan, you learn the cast rule, correct? Yeah. All are positive in quadrant one, sine in two, tan in three, and cosine in quadrant four. Now, if I'm talking about a sine value, and if I take a value in quadrant three, for example, then I'm expecting a negative answer, right? Yeah. For sine theta. However, if you just leave this as square root of one minus cos square theta, which is always positive, you will never get negative. So this equation will not be satisfied. Right. So therefore, I took the value of theta as 240 degrees. Now, 240 degrees clearly is in quadrant three. Mm -hmm. When I substitute 240 degrees, I do get answer as minus half. However, if I substitute 240 degrees on the right hand side, I get plus half. Since both are not equal, it's not an identity. So that could act as a counterexample to show that this is not an identity. Is that clear to you? Wait, so you subbed in the 214 to the cos square theta? Yes, yes. So 1 minus cos square oh, theta. Oh, you're positive. Is, yeah, yeah, I get it. Oh, okay. It's always positive. Mm -hmm. And earlier we got negative, so they are not equal. Oh, I you see. Could have, yeah, yeah. You could have selected 300 or some value here in quadrant 4 also to show the same thing. So it acts as a counterexample. Clear? Right. Yeah, yeah. Clear. <clears throat> now, We'll prove some identities using this simple concept of that point coordinate, right? In this case, we are considering a point P. Let's say the point P is X, Y. That means that the X value and Y value, X becomes the adjacent side, Y becomes the opposite side, where angle theta and R is the hypotenuse, right? So clearly, for this particular triangle, sine theta will be defined as Y over R, cos theta is X over R, tan theta is B over A, where r is equal to square root of x squared plus y squared. I would like you to pause the video and then answer these four questions. You need to prove these trigonometric identities using x and y values. Okay, so take a picture at the moment and then we'll go through this soon. All right. So basically, to prove this identity, what am I going to do? I'm going to start with the left-hand side, right? And then find a value. And then I'll go with the right-hand side. If both are equal, in that case, it's an identity. Perfect. Yeah. For example, cos theta is what? Cos theta is x over r. So in this particular case, the right-hand side is x over r, right? On the left-hand side, I've got cotangent theta over sine theta. Cotangent is reciprocal of tan, so I could write this as A over B, right? Yeah. Times sine theta, which is Y over R. It's not A over B. We are talking in terms of X and Y. So, cot yeah, I should have written, sorry. So, tangent is Y over X. Right? Opposite side over this. So, cotangent will be X over Y. Tangent is Y over X. 
times sine theta, which is y over r. Oh. Right? Uh -huh. Clearly. Yeah. Y and y cancel. We are left with x over r. Which is we, same as the right hand side. So we so do. So it's an know. identity. Oh. Identity. Do you see that? Very simple proof. Yes. Actually speaking, Emmy, if the question is very difficult, you could use this strategy. Mm -hmm. Substitute all cosine, sine, tangent with x and y and r, and prove that left side is equal to right hand side. All right. Okay. Very, very yeah. effective strategy for a difficult question. If you are stuck in the test and you don't know like how to move forward, just do this. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. And do we always work from left hand side to right hand side if we're trying to prove it? It is an idea. Not the other one. It is an okay. identity. It will work. Correct. Uh, okay. Summarize yeah. all the solutions quickly for you. So we were trying to prove what cotangent times sine theta was, and we had shown that it is cos theta. This method yeah. here is start from left hand side, write the ratios in terms of x, y, and r, simplify and derive expression on the right hand side. When you get that yeah. same thing, then we have shown that it's an identity. So when I start with left hand right. side, which is cotangent theta. Let me show you. Cor theta is x over y. Sine theta is y over r. Now simplify this. That means we'll just cancel y's and we are left with x over r. And we know what x over r is. x over r is cos theta, which is right hand side. So we have moved from left side to right side. That's another way of proving the identity, which is mm -hmm. a better way of doing it. Correct. You can start from left hand side and then show that it is equal to right hand side. So you only work with one side. So there are two strategies which you could work with. You start with left hand side, come to an expression, start with right hand side, come to an expression, and both are equal. Then they are equal. Or start with left hand side and end on the right hand side, which is definitely a better strategy. Now let's take yeah. a <laughs> complicated case. Yeah. One plus sine theta over sine theta. Now we know what sine theta is. Well, sine theta is the ratio of y over x, right? So just for our reference, let me, uh, oh, the triangle is already given here. Let me make a bigger one, right? So we're oh, no. talking about this y, x, and r, and this is the right angle triangle. Correct. So sine theta basically is the ratio of y and r, uh, y and r. Y over r. Yeah y over r sorry this is a typing error y over r this is also y over r correct so so we take common factor y over r this is r over y <laughs> sorry for all that okay so as you can see over here sine theta basically is y over r right yeah substituting y over r for sine theta we get 1 plus y over r in the numerator divided by y over r, taking r as a common factor. In the numerator, we can write this as r plus y over r, and the denominator is r over y, right? Now, mm -hmm. r and r cancel, and we are left with r plus y divided by y, correct? And individually dividing, we get r over y plus 1 and r over y r over y is cosecant theta, we get cosecant theta plus 1, correct? And <laughs> 1 plus cosecant theta is the right hand side. So I'd like you to redo this question with this correction, which is sine theta equals to y over r, and you'll get the result, okay? Yep. Fine. So let's take the other two examples. 1 plus cotangent theta over cosecant theta equals to sine theta plus cos theta. So clearly, Again, looking into this particular triangle, which I've shown you here, we can say cot theta is the ratio of x over y. So we are replacing cot theta by x over y. And we will replace cosecant theta, which is the reciprocal of sine, as y over r over y. Correct? So doing that, yeah. we we'll simplify and get our result. First step, what I did was, starting with the left hand side, I wrote this as two terms, 1 over cosecant theta plus cot over cosecant theta. Now, cosecant theta is r over y, and cot is x over y divided by r over y. When you simplify, you do get a term, which is, as shown here, y over r plus x over r, same as the right-hand side, 
sin theta plus cosine theta. You get the idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the question would be complicated, right? Even then, you can use this concept. And here is another example, the last one which we are going to do with x and y values. Secant square theta minus tan square theta equals to 1, right? So we just replaced secant theta with r over x and tan theta with y over x. And when you square and add them, you get r square minus y square over x square, r square over x square minus y square. What is r square minus y square? r square minus y square is x square, correct? Yeah. So replacing x square, r square, minus x square. Y square by x square, you get one on the right hand side, and that is what you need. All right. So that is how mm -hmm. you do it, correct? So this is one yeah. strategy to prove identities. You could use this kind of a triangle and prove trigonometric identities. Now here is some more strategies which we'll not talk about. Can you please read this slide? Yeah. So um, important strategies to simplify trigonometric re expressions. Rewrite expression in terms of sine and cosine. Factor them and then simplify. Rationalize using conjugate of expression and simplify taking common denominator. Perfect. So these mm -hmm. are some strategies. So especially if you have in your uh, trigonometric equation somewhere or in the identity, uh, terms like secant theta, reciprocal identities, and all, all those things, just write them in sine yeah. and cosine. So once you have everything in sine and cosine, it becomes much, much simpler to solve the equation or prove the identity, okay? Right. The other strategy mm -hmm. is to factor. If you get something which is like quadratic form, in that case, factoring is the uh, most important thing to do. If you see something which has a square root, then you'd need to do rationalization, correct? Yeah. So these are the strategies which are going to help. Now, for each strategy, we'll take one example each. So example number four oh. here is uh, to prove that tan theta over secant theta is sine theta. So our strategy is to write tan and secant in terms of sine and cosine. So we know tangent is a ratio of sine over cos theta and secant is one over cos theta. As soon as you write it in this side, you can cancel cosine thetas and what you get is sine theta. So you have shown that tan theta over secant theta is sine theta, clear? Yeah. Similarly, if our question is one plus tan theta plus one plus cotangent theta is equals to tan theta. In that case, what is tan theta? It is the ratio of sine over cosine. Cotangent is the ratio of cos over sine. Well, you can simplify this particular fraction in numerator and denominator, which I've done here by taking common denominators. And then you see that your sine theta plus cos theta terms cancel. And what are you left with? You are left with sine theta over cos theta, which is tan theta, correct? So you're mm -hmm. shown that this is an identity. You see how simple it is? Just converting yeah. all of the trigonometric ratios into sine and cosine. Now let's go through example number five, where we are going to use the strategy to factor and then simplify. So whenever you see some terms which have squares and things like that, you know, we mm -hmm. might have to do factoring. So here are two questions which we are going to simplify. So first one is cos square theta plus cos theta over sine square theta. We need to simplify this and, you know, uh, this question seems to be incomplete. Uh, let me just write down. This should be equal to secant square theta. And this should be equal to cos theta over one minus cos theta. Okay, uh, so you can complete this particular question. Some things are missing, right? So this is what we need to prove that left side is equal to right hand side. Now the strategy here is we will actually factor. Since we have cos square theta plus cos theta in the numerator, you could factor cos theta, correct? So when you factor <laughs> cos theta, you get cos theta plus one as the other factor. Now, what can you do with sine square theta? You know the term cos square theta plus sine square theta is one, correct? 
Yeah. So sine square theta is basically equals to one minus one. cos square theta. Mm -hmm. And one minus cos square theta can be factored, written as one plus cos theta times one minus cos theta. Is that correct? Uh, yep. So mm -hmm. therefore, first I wrote sine square theta as one minus cos square theta and then factored it as one plus cos theta divided by one minus cos theta. Correct? Yeah. Now mm -hmm. we have a common factor in numerator and denominator. We cancel this out and this is equals to right hand side. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that is how uh, you need to prove this identity. Similarly, you could prove this one also. One plus sine square theta over one minus sine to the power of four. So sine to the power of four could be factored as, you know, a square minus b square is a plus b times a minus b. So the denominator is factored as one plus sine square theta times one minus sine square theta. I mean x, right? So as soon as you write that in the denominator, you could cancel the numerator and one of the terms in the denominator. And you do get a simplified expression, which is one minus one over one minus sine square theta. And you know, one minus sine square theta is what? One minus sine square theta is cos square theta. And therefore, one over cos square theta can be written as secant square theta, which is your right hand side. Mm. Many steps are here. I'm just going through it quickly so that yeah. you have an idea of how do we prove these identities. Is that part clear to you? Mm -hmm. But definitely. Yeah, and like how to approach it as well. How to yeah. It's right. really good to see. Yeah, because like when you said, like if you see like, let's say, um, assert something, you need to know to rationalize. If you see a square, you should be aware that you could factorize. So right. knowing these things beforehand is really good. So yeah, it's helpful. And even when I shared with you the formula list, let me go back to that. In this formula sheet, oh, when yeah, I was so talking cool. about the Pythagorean identities, which are this, yeah. sine square theta plus cos square theta equals to one. Remember, this could be written in many different ways. Sine square theta, mm -hmm. when you rearrange, is one minus cos square theta. And one minus cos square theta could be written as one plus cos theta times one minus cos theta. So when I say factory, mm -hmm. you have to use this strategy. You have already right. converted all the terms into sine and cosine. So only one Pythagorean identity and this combination helps you prove all the identities. You get the idea. Mm -hmm. Because so you can do so much with that. Yeah, okay. that's the thing. So first get yeah, down you keep breaking it down. Yes, and then get yeah. to this. That is what I'm trying to teach you here in this particular example. Um, I purposely missed right. many steps since the idea is only to expose to you this strategy. You get the idea. Yeah, then yeah. You can yeah. solve any equation. Perfect. Let's take up more. This is uh, uh, okay. We did this. Okay. We done. That. Yeah. Now we see a square root. Do you see in this question square root of one plus mm -hmm. cos x over one minus cos x and is equal to something on the right hand side? How do we approach it? You could simplify. Whenever you see a square root thing, rationalize. Rationalize means mm -hmm. multiply and divide by the conjugate of the denominator. We are rationalizing the denominator. Denominator is one minus cos x. Conjugate is one plus cos x. So I'm multiplying and dividing by one plus cos x. This is as good as multiplying by one. So I'm not really changing mm -hmm. the equation as soon as you do that. A plus B times A minus B is A square minus B square. That is the idea, right? So when we have A plus B times A minus B, what you get is a square minus b square. And that helps us to get rid of the square root. Um, so, denominator, one minus cos x times one plus cos x gives me one minus cos square x. And we know one minus cos square x is sine square x, Pythagorean identity. And within mm -hmm, the square yeah. root, we have the numerator also a perfect square, denominator also a perfect square. And therefore, what do we get? We get one plus cos x over sine x, a positive value. You get the idea. Yeah, just a quick thing. Um, yeah. If you see like uh, like like there with the whole um, third square root over it, can you square the whole thing or no? Do you think it's best to avoid that? You could do that also. To get rid of the square root. Yeah, and uh, yeah. actually speaking, this question should have been here, absolute value of one plus cos x. So that is kind of important, right? So... <clears throat> Whenever you have square root of this type, yeah, it should have been absolute value. It's my typing error. When I do square root of square, I should get absolute value, right? Remember, we said 
square root of x square is absolute value of x, not x. Mm. So no, but I meant like if you take that initial like square root thing of the whole question on the left hand side, can you square the whole thing you to get rid of the square root? You okay, could, you could do that. You could do that. Okay, yeah. But this is a simpler approach. All right. Yeah, yeah. This is simpler. Just checking. Okay. No, no. What you're saying is perfectly fine. That is correct. As soon oh, as yeah. square, I thought it was wrong. No, it is right. not wrong. As soon as you square both the sides, you get 1 plus cos x, which is on this side will be 1 plus cos x whole square. Do you see that? I mean, it will not mm -hmm. be directly 1 plus cos x, correct? The denominator yeah. you will get directly because sine square x will be 1 minus sine square x. And then you will follow these steps in the reverse order and you will get your answer. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. The only thing is when you square, you are following the steps in kind of reverse order. Oh, so okay. I'll stick to this order, but I was just like, I was just asking, that's all. Okay. Yeah, stick to this order. Yeah, I think your whenever, way is easier. Yeah. Whenever you see square root, just rationalize and go through it. That is simpler. Okay, yeah. yeah. So now Still. another equation here we have, 1 over cos x minus tan x equals to 1 plus sine x over cos x. It's kind of a difficult question. Now, we do not have a square root term here. You see, there is no square root term, right? Mm. Even yeah. then, what have I done? I have rationalized. Actually, I have rationalized it. Oh. You need so, it so what you're saying is even if there's no actual square root, you still can use that as an approach, like rationalizing the denominator. Why did I do so? I'll show you. If you look into the <laughs> Pythagorean the identity, yeah. If you look into the Pythagorean yeah. identity, one plus tan square x, tan square theta is secant square theta. That means Difference of secant square theta and tan square theta is 1. Difference mm -hmm. of secant square theta and tan square theta is 1. And therefore, what yeah. I did was, I am seeing this in the denominator. If I multiply by a conjugate, I get difference of secant square theta and tan square theta, which will be 1. I am getting oh, rid of the denominator. So divide by 1. Yes. Right. I am yeah, getting yeah. rid of the denominator. Oh. That's, that's even better than having it. Yeah, like even just like, because when you rationalize, you still have a denominator just without the square root. But now you're completely getting rid of the denominator, which is so much easier to work with. Yeah. This is amazing strategy, not discussed anywhere yeah. in any book. But I discovered that whenever you have those kind of, out of those Pythagorean identities, like square things, you rationalize and you get difference of square. And we know for okay. cotangent and cosecant and secant and tan, the difference of squares is one. So yeah. why not? So if this word, yeah, that's word so cool. even cosecant and cotangent, apply this strategy of rationalizing and get your answer within three steps. Otherwise, this question is very difficult. Right. Very difficult question otherwise. Yeah. You so made as it so as simple. I, yeah. yeah. As soon as I did so, we get secant square x minus tan square x in the denominator, which is one. And therefore, only the yeah. new matter remains which I've written in terms of sine and cosine and got my right hand side. Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. So rationalization could be like also that. adopted for such cases. Next example, <clears throat> taking common denominator and simplifying. So we have one over one minus sine x plus one over one plus sine x equals to two secant square x, clearly. If I multiply them, this is difference of square, I'll get 1 minus sine square x. 1 minus sine square x can be written as cos square x, correct? And yeah. here, it is much simpler to solve. So you can go through these steps. I've taken a common denominator, which is a very good step. And therefore, mm -hmm. we are saying the strategy is to take the common denominator. And in the numerator, we have 1 plus sine x plus 1 minus sine x when you add them up, sine x, sine x cancel, we get 2 over 1 minus sine square x, which is 2 over cos square x, or 2 secant square x. We prove this identity. Is that clear to you? Yeah. Exactly similar steps are followed for the second example, as you can go through it. Correct? So we mm -hmm. had a common denominator, and then we just kind of cross multiply. When you cross multiply, open the bracket, to 1 minus sine square theta, open the bracket, you get these terms, 1 minus 2 sine theta plus sine square theta. And we know what is sine square theta plus cos square theta. It is equal to 1. Correct? One. 
yeah. one minus one is zero. Uh, I mean, uh, is two, and we can take two common. One and one. Yeah. yeah, and then we can cancel these two terms and prove the identity. But a lot of steps involved. However, these six examples which I have dealt with actually tell you the strategies which you could follow to prove identities. Does it make sense to you? Oh, right. Yeah, it's really clear. Yeah. Now let's take some more examples. So now we are getting into our six examples. We know different strategies. We have learned six strategies to solve or prove trigonometric identities. So Amy, here is another set of six questions. You can take a picture, solve this yourself. We'll just go through some steps broadly. How do we solve these, right? Yeah. <clears throat> now, let us discuss this strategy. What can you do in question number one, which is sine square x cos square y minus sine square y cos square x equals to, we have the term sine square x minus sine square y. What do you think could be a strategy to solve this particular question? Mm, okay, so we got squares involved, so we could use that um, first Pythagorean identity, which was Perfect. sine squared dx plus cos squared x equals one. Um, can we take something common? Wait, let me just go. So what, another thing you notice here is that we have cos square y and cos square x, but on the right hand side, we only have sign terms, right? Yeah, so, so we have to write those in terms of... Oh, yeah, so we can use cos yes, square write theta one minus. one minus sine square theta, right? Um, yeah. So in this case, it is y. So we'll replace this cos square y with 1 minus sine square y. Mm -hmm. This cos square x by 1 minus sine square x and simplify to get the right hand side. You get the idea? Yeah. Now, second question. What strategy should you adopt to do question number two? Mm. I don't, so since I'm saying like to the power of six, yeah. I, I don't know if you can like factor or... Yes, um, but, but a cube plus b cube is what? a cube plus b cube is a plus b times a square minus a b plus b square. So use this formula, factor, and solve. Ah, I Got see. It. Can I just quickly write that one down? Yeah. Um, wait, so a cubed plus b cubed equals... A squared minus A B plus B squared. Cool. Yeah. Question number three. Um, okay. Um, so sine squared. Okay. Look at the right hand side. What do we want? We want something in cosine. So it's a good practice to remove these signs and write them in terms of cosine. Reverse of what you did here. Oh, okay. And then I keep trying to not look at the right and just try and figure out the <laughs> left. So I should okay. look at what the right is and then use that to my advantage and then work yes. backwards. Oh, okay, I you see. You know I where see. you yeah. want to go. If you know where you want to go, you will find the path. This is kind of important. Right. Next one, what should you do? Okay, question four. Okay, so let's look at the right side. So we want in terms of sine. So, oh, but we can we can make can make a common denominator. Correct. When you make a common denominator, there are chances that the other terms will cancel, and you are left with sine theta, which is already in the denominator, yeah. and you'll prove it. So, common denominator is our strategy. What should you do for question number five? Um. Okay, so we want in terms of tan square theta and cotangent um rationalize <laughs> yes you could do that beautiful Is it? Yeah. you could multiply by okay. tan okay. theta plus cot theta and divide by the same term once you rationalize you will get your answer you are uh, right. right that is the best strategy i see i'm not sure whether i adopted this strategy in the solution i'll see that and the next one oh. number six okay so um both are square roots. So we could, um, 
I, I guess you could rationalize again, maybe both each, of them, rationalize one. both of them yeah. separately and then solve. Now, yeah. for question number five, rationalization is a better strategy. But since there's one more strategy which we used is to write in terms of sine and cosine, you could do that also. Write all these terms in sine and cosine. Oh, yeah. It'll be slightly longer, but it'll be straightforward. Okay. It'll be longer, but straightforward. But if you rationalize in three steps, you'll get your answer. Okay. So let's quickly mm. go through our. I like that method. <laughs> Yeah, and you got yeah. it. I, I really love that part. Now, <laughs> let's go through these solutions one by one. So the very first one we talked about is to write down cos square y in terms of 1 minus sine square y. And also cos square x in terms of 1 minus sine square x. Only reason was that on the right hand side, we have both the terms in sine. And clearly you can see, yeah. now we have equations with only sine terms. Once you simplify, you do prove that it is equal to the right hand side. Very simple as that. So the only thing which I've used here is Pythagorean identity, sine square theta plus cos square theta equals to one. That means cos square theta can be written as one minus sine square theta. Is that clear to yeah. you? Mm -hmm. Next example. The strategy was to factor. We know a cube plus b cube is a plus b times a square minus a b plus b square. So we wrote sine to the power of six as sine square to the power of three cos to the power of 6 also as cos squared to the power of 3. So we have a cube plus b cube. We expanded this and then simplified to mm. get the result. Do you see that? Yeah, that was really good. <laughs> Question number three. We have this term right there in the numerator. Now, this is actually a very difficult question. How do we solve this? We understood that we need only cosine terms. And therefore, we need to break down the sine square theta. So sine square theta has been written as 1 minus cos square theta in numerator and denominator. Once you do that, it can easily be simplified. 1 and 1 cancel, as you can see. And then we took cos theta as a common factor and then simplified as you move along. Correct? Uh, so you get so everything in terms of cosine. It was so simple to prove this identity. Is that clear to you? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Next example. We have 1 plus cos theta over sine theta plus 1 plus plus sine theta over 1 plus cos theta. Well, common denominator is our strategy, correct? Yeah. Clearly, once you take the common denominator as shown here, we get the terms which in the numerator involves cos square theta plus sine square theta. They add up to 1. And so we simplify the equation on the left-hand side and get the result. Do you see that part? Yeah. Straightforward. Um, okay. Question number five. Now we have tan and cotangent. It is two strategies. You should do this with rationalization on your own and see how beautifully you and see if I get the same. Get the result. Oh, okay. Correct. What I did was yeah. I broke down to sine and cosine terms. Could you see that part? I actually I broke know. down like to sine and cosine terms. Uh, and I've done a mistake here. Because if this is cotangent, I should have written this as cos over sine theta, right? What are we looking at? Oh, yeah. Mm. Cotangent is cos over sine theta. Yeah. Cos over sine theta. So, so don't go through this proof. You do it yourself. Is that clear to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do it myself. Yeah. Do it yourself. Okay. There's some. That's mistake. fine. I understand what you're doing. I understand what you're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of typing yeah, yeah. I did it hurriedly tonight, so it was difficult. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, yeah. Question number six, which I'm discussing with you, strategy clearly we discussed was to rationalize. But see, yeah. we have to rationalize both the terms. So mm -hmm. here we multiply and divide by uh, one, one minus one minus one minus, right? Let me just read it. Like See, yeah. a lot of typing errors. Plus, so I multiplied conjugate of one minus sine theta as what? Conjugate of one minus sine theta is one plus sine theta. Correct. So you multiply and divide by one plus sine theta. Here also, the second term. Oh, this was the question. That's okay. This is the conjugate. Correct. So it's not wrong. So the left hand side is given to us, which is which is basically the question here. So we began with left hand side. So in the first case, I multiplied by the conjugate one plus sine theta. And the second case, the conjugate is one minus sine x, correct? 
So when you multiply and divide by that, yeah. you get the difference of square in the denominators, right? As we see here, correct? And the numerators become perfect square. So they can be opened. The square root square, we get our result, which is, as you can see over here, 2 over cos x. Now, once again, let me correct this question. It should have been absolute value of 2 secant x. Now, many oh, positive values. Yeah. yeah. Uh, why am I writing without absolute value? Because in many books they use only two secant x. You get the idea. Many books. Yeah, they don't have the absolute value. Yeah. They don't write the absolute value. So the questions are written in this fashion, and this is the oh, proof. Okay. And this is how their students are solving. And all of a sudden, if I just bring that absolute value into picture, it becomes slightly difficult yeah. for students to understand. Okay. That's so, true. Now that is a that's a big problem, right? So anyway, but you understand that well, you should not be defying the question, <laughs> solve it as it is, but strictly speaking, that should have been square, absolute value. Because yeah. when you add two positive things, you cannot get a negative thing, correct? Right. Secant has both positive and That's negative true. values, correct? So it cannot be an mm -hmm. idea. Right? Right. It's a very important learning from this particular case. So, Amy, did you understand all these strategies of how to yeah. solve pneumatic identities? You know what I was surprised about? We went at such a fast pace, but I understood everything. That, like, that's, that's how clear it was. Yes. Like, from the beginning, uh, half of the, I think, to half the lesson, it was just talking about um, the general point. When you have a general point and making a right angle triangle, we just proved every single identity from only that right angle triangle using yeah. X, Y, and R. It was so easy. So, so simple. And the next part we did was literally finding different um, approaches to questions. So um, just knowing how to approach. So what I really liked was towards the end, how, yeah, uh, yeah, this one. So just knowing um, the different stuff you could use, rationalizing, um, even if there's not a square root, you could still rationalize and see if you can get around it. Um, substituting X, Y, and R as sine and cosine write it in terms of sine and cosine for like cotangent and stuff like that. Um, and so many other um, strategies that we did as well, which I think overall was really helpful because when you're in, a, in the exam and you're like, you don't know how to approach a question, it's no, nice knowing all the certain approaches so that when you're really, really stuck, you know what to do. So yeah, that I think key. today's lesson that was just the key. super. Perfect. So mm -hmm. Emmy, are you ready I for the lot, second sir. Very good. Are you ready for the second yes. part? Which is, the which, second is part. <laughs> which is this. So we need to now solve this particular set of questions, which says solve trigonometric equations involving identities. And as you can see, we have identities kind of on at least on one side. And we have to we need to solve this type of question, correct? So you have already learned uh, how to solve simple equations. You have also learned how to prove identities. We are now combining both these strategies and learning how to do this. This is examination style uh, test paper. So now, uh, let me just uh, take it from the very beginning. <clears throat> so what I've done here is that I've copied all these five questions for you. What I will do is I will actually provide you solutions for the first three and the other two, okay. they are kind of your test questions. I've already given you a hint. Hint is, Prove the left side equals to 2 secant theta. So for this question, this becomes your identity. You have to prove that this left side is 2 secant theta. Okay. And then you have an equation. 2 secant theta equals to 4. Solve that equation. Correct? For the second one. But if you didn't tell me that, yeah. if you didn't tell me to prove the left side is that, then can I still figure it out myself or not? Yes. So now, because at the end of this lesson, you will understand if question is this form, you need to simplify each side and see what are you getting. Uh, Correct? Oh, now, right, here, okay. Because I'm not providing you, you the solution. Me. I'm giving you a hint, right? Similarly, the Fair. Okay. Okay. Yeah. actually is very simple. If you could prove that the left side is equal to one, then the equation is cotangent theta is one and you have the answer. Correct? But the uh, tricky part here I is see. to prove the left-hand side and therefore, I'm taking this as a part of 
trigonometric identities are not really part of solving equations because the trick here is yeah. to uh, simplify the identity. So let's begin with the very first question and see how do we solve it. So can you please read this question, question number one for us? Uh, yep. Yeah. One minus cos theta over sine theta minus sine theta over one plus cos theta equals to tan two theta, where theta is between zero and 360 degrees. Got it. So if you have a question like this, you should understand that yeah. you have to simplify the left hand side. And then once you start simplifying, what strategy should you adopt? You should adopt the strategy of common factors, correct? Which we learn. Mm -hmm. So just take the common factors and simplify. When you do this simplification, as, you sh as has been shown here, you get one minus one and you get zero right there on, on the left hand side. And therefore, since mm -hmm. the left hand side is equal to zero, we are actually solving the equation tan two theta equals to zero within the interval zero to 360 degrees. Do you see how simple it is? Oh, yeah. That was really quick, the way you just broke the whole thing down. I was expecting like a lot more and now we're done basically. So tan yeah. theta equal, tan two theta equals to zero and we can just use our, yeah, I was gonna say Got our it. graph. You, yeah, you could use your graph, correct. And two theta equals to zero in solving equations you learn that this domain actually changes, right? So if theta is between zero degrees to 360 degrees, then two theta will be between what? Times zero two. degrees to 720 degrees, correct? So for two right. theta, you are getting all these solutions, correct? Mm -hmm. So all these values for two theta up to 720, you have to write and divide by two to get all the possible solutions. And those are your solutions, correct? Yes, yeah, so just a quick thing. Yeah. Um, we know we have to find so how do you do that thing where you um, find the number of solutions, like okay. with using our like quadrant okay. thing? Correct. So for tan theta, the period is 180 degrees. For tan theta, the period is 180 degrees, correct? It repeats after, it's like yeah. minus 90 to 90, correct? For sine and cosine, yeah. the period is 360 degrees, correct? Mm -hmm. So in this particular case, you see you are going to get zero after every 90, I mean, uh, after every 180. So zero, keep on adding 180. Okay, so if we're at zero, you add 180. Keep on, keep on adding the zero plus three times 180 till you reach 720. Because oh, your domain is 720. Okay. Mm -hmm. That so is what I said. So if it was um, uh, like a cos graph, would you just do, instead of 180, you put 360 in the bracket? Correct, correct, cos 360. Okay. But then in okay, cos graph, yeah. Yeah. or you could do like cos also, uh, but I would prefer whenever it is tan or cotangent, the period is 180. So you should add 180. That is the best way. So, you know, okay. that is all. But when it is a cos graph, let me correct you there. Uh, I mean, uh, then the graph will be kind of like this. Do you understand? Uh, let, let's not, the sign will give me, the cos will give me like this. Because for a yeah. cosine, we have two values already, right? Yeah. So with every circle, you'll get multiple values. So to each value, you have to add three. Oh. Right. So you have to add three yeah, yeah. here, and you have to add 360 here also, to each value. Oh, whereas here, we only had um, one, that one, one value, and then you just add them. Oh, I see. Yeah, because this was zero, right? Because this was zero. If this was like half or something else, we would have got two values. Do you understand? Oh, same principle applies. Okay, same I get it. Yeah, yeah. So if it's zero one. minus one or one. Yeah, yeah. 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 Then if it's zero minus one or one, you do this method. Okay, got it. Yeah, okay. yeah. Got it. You remember. That's good you remember. If it is zero, one or minus one, look mm -hmm. at the graph. If it is something else, okay. then you follow this method. Good job. Question number two. Okay. This seems to be a very similar question to what we did. Correct? 
So one plus yeah. cos theta over sine theta, sine theta over one plus cos theta is kind of reverse of what we had. So so we'll just simplify the left hand side, and when you do that, you get two over sine theta on the left hand side. You get the idea. Mm -hmm. Using the common denominator, it simplifies to two over sine two theta. So left hand side is two over sine theta. Therefore, we can now write down the equation as two over sine theta equals to two over cos theta. And then sine theta of cos theta is tan theta. Yeah, tan theta equals to one. Uh, and here the question is to provide general solution. So we know when is tan theta is one for 45 degrees. Tan theta is one. General solution is 180 times n. You add that up. Yeah, and you can just look at the graph to prove that. Yeah, cool. got the idea. Mm -hmm. How simple it is. The question may look very difficult, but we need to simplify one part of it so that you kind of uh, simplify to a identity. Can you tell me how will you do this question? Can you read the question? All right. Yeah. Yeah. So cos theta over one minus tan theta plus sine theta over one minus cotangent theta mm -hmm. equals to sine theta minus cos theta. Good. Okay. So since um, the right hand side is in terms of sine theta and cos theta, yes. we can, and we, we can see that we've got cotangent, which can be written in terms of, um, sine and in terms of cosine, sine and cosine. You can yes. just substitute that yes. where you see cotangent and then find, I don't know, common denominator and then work yes, from Yes, common that? denominator. Yeah, okay. then you find common denominator for each, correct? Simplify as shown here. Once you simplify, you say that the left-hand side is equal to what? Left hand side comes to be cos theta plus sine theta. The right hand side is sine theta minus cos theta. So our equation now becomes cos theta plus sine theta equals to sine theta minus cos theta. Do you see how? Yeah. So now this is a very simple equation to solve. Bring all the terms together. We get two cos theta equals to zero, cos theta equals to zero. And the general solution is yeah. that theta equals to 90 degrees times two n plus one. Yeah. So it I becomes like that one. such a simple thing. That's question. yeah. But the major part Yeah, is, just about Yeah, yeah. Sorry, just about the general formula. How did you like get to that? Like derive to that? I understand what it is doing, but if you had to do it from scratch. So when we are saying that cos theta is zero, so these are the values. Correct? So these values are at 90, yeah. 70, mm -hmm. and so on. Correct? So they are multiples of 90, correct? But they are odd multiples of 90. Odd means 2n plus 1. Even is 2n. Odd is 2n plus 1. Mm -hmm. but that is how we get we this term 2n plus 1. So how come there are odd multiples? Because meaning, yeah, because one eighty gives you minus one. Three sixty gives you plus one. Multiples of ninety. Multiples of ninety. Oh, okay. Ninety, right? One eighty, two seventy, three sixty. But our answers are what? Our answers are ninety oh, and seventy. Only the odd ones. I see. Okay. Only the odd multiples. That was nice to all right. So that yeah, is yeah. how you get so can I just could, it is integers. It could be negative or positive. You get the idea. Yeah. So that brings us to the end of this particular exercise, leaving the last two questions for you. Simple. As you can see, I'll do that. you can always derive uh, equivalent expression for the left hand side and then equate and solve the trigonometric identity uh, equation. That is the strategy for you. Right. These are the type yeah. of questions which could be very difficult in test papers. But now I hope with this mm -hmm. you understand the complete, you know, combination of trigonometric identities and equations. Yeah, definitely. I was like so clear. I really enjoyed today's lesson. I love how you tied everything together. Like we started off really simple and then it got Quite, you would say it was quite hard if you look at it first hand, but then after you went through and explained everything, it's really simple, you know? It's just that they don't explain it like that at school or in the books, which make it look as hard as it looks, you know? Yes. So, but it's yes. not really that hard, yeah.
Well, so thank you so much, sir. I really my pleasure. Appreciate my it. pleasure. Thank you. We should actually sail through all the questions in your book. If you find any yeah. difficulty, just post, right? Let me see. Okay. If I have not touched upon a few things, we'll take that up also. Okay. I don't think that's uh, very likely. I think you touched upon everything. And maybe for next year as well. <laughs> so yeah, it was perfect. Thanks, okay, then. Sir. All the best. Have a good uh, rest of your week next week. And um, I'll see you next week. See you next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye, see you.